And we're going to look at capitalized cost. This is another name for present worth. So this is another name for the present worth of all reoccurring costs. So this is all recurring costs. Or, and it could be not just costs, but payment. So capitalized costs. So this is particularly true and used when the number of periods is quite large. In some cases, you'll see this referred to with an indefinite time frame. So meaning we're going to do present worth analysis with an indefinite time frame, which you might ask, how would that work? Right? Well, if these are recurring, then we could go to the formula for recurring costs for present worth, right? And we would find something like P equals A, one minus one, one plus I to the nth divided by I. Now, question for you is what happens when N is really large? You'll note that this is where N is, right? And so as N grows, then this factor approaches zero. So if that factor goes away, then what are we left with? Then we're just left with P equals A over I. And that's it. So for indefinite time frames, right? Or those in which the number of time frames is quite large, let's say 30 years or greater, then capitalized costs, right? Is just going to be the recurring costs divided by the interest rate. So CC equals AI. And I can always remember this because I like to eat. So A equals pi, right? For N that's really, really large. And that's essentially capitalized costs. All right, so let's look at a simple example. Let's say we purchase something for 200K, right? So we purchase it for 200K and it makes us, it saves you 20K a year compared to your current method. So here's us, right? Right now we expend 200K because it makes us, it saves us 20K a year. So one, two, three, for how long? It says you can use this thing for a good 20 plus years. So let's go with indefinite. I don't want to go with infinite. We'll go with indefinite. And what is the equivalent rate of this capitalized cost? So we're going to break off here, put 20 plus. All right. So we're hitting up 20K. All right. So. It's asking for capitalized costs, so we know capitalized costs, which is really present worth, is equal to A over I, right? Which is to say A equals pi. But this time, they're asking for that, right? What is the equivalent rate of this capitalized cost? So A is, I is A over P, right? So we're talking about 20K over 200K. So you mathematicians out there would say that's 10%, All right? I mean, it's 0.1, but it's going to come out 10%. Let's look at another example. Let's say we are looking at a long, really long lease of a facility. So we're looking at this option here. We know it's going to be a really long time. So in quite a bit greater than one, we have an upfront cost. Right, also known as present worth cost. We have the annual operating costs, which are two, right? 5K up to your four and 8K after that. Then we have maintenance of 50K at the end of year 10. And that's it. And then we have more maintenance that occurs and it's 15K every 13 years. Presumably all of this is versus zero, right? Year zero. So, What's the capitalized cost? Which is to say, what's the present worth when we've got these recurring costs, right? Because if this is a really, really long time, then this 15K is also gonna be recurring, right? Because it says every 13 years. This annual cost is obviously recurring, right? Every year, this is non-recurring. So that one's already present worth. 
So we're going to solve for the capitalized cost and we'll pick, let's say I equals 10%. So what do we do first? Well, we draw out the cash flow because we need a really good visual to get started. And then we're going to want to break this down into recurring versus non-recurring costs, doing the non-recurring first. So this is going to be a little painful to draw. There we go. So it's going to look like that, in which I'm going to pick a different color. So here we have the 5K for the first four years, and then starting in the fifth year, we have 8K. So those are all our annual costs. Those are recurring. All right, so I mentioned we're going to solve this by first breaking down into non-recurring versus recurring. The non-recurring ones are pretty easy, right? Because essentially, capitalized cost is present worth, right? When n is very great. So capitalized cost one, let's say this is one, is just 150K, negative, right? And then capitalized cost two is this one because it's also non-recurring. So capitalized cost two is minus 50K. Now in this case, I'm looking for P, right? Capitalized cost is present worth. So P given F, 10% for 10 years, right? Because we're here in year 10. Now that's the extent of our non-recurring costs. After this, everything else is recurring. The easiest conceptually to see that it is recurring is the 8K. And then this 15K, it says more maintenance, 15K every 13 years. So that's also recurring. Now what we're going to do is since this is recurring, and don't be deceived by the break in the time scale, right? Maybe I'll switch to yellow for this one. So this, what we're going to do is change this into a recurring amount that we can add into everything else. So of course, because of the break, there's a 13 year span here and there's a 13 year span here and so on, right? So what I'm going to do for that one is say A, right? We'll call this part three, all right? So A for part three is what? All right. no. 15K, all right? A given F, 10% for 13 years. And what I'm going to do is convert this 15K into an equivalent across here, right? For all 13 years. And then I'll show you why. So let's do this numerically. So here it is in Excel. There's the equation if you want to see it. So we know it's $612, let's say. So that's 612. So whether I have 13 recurring payments of 612, that is equivalent to in 13 years, right, 15K, where we would have one future amount. So that's A. So all we did was convert between those. Now, why am I doing that? because we want to find the capitalized cost, right? We want to find capitalized cost equals what? And we know A equals pi, conversely, P equals A over I. So if I can convert all of these recurring costs to A, I can add them up and find P, you see? So that's what I'm doing here. So now I know that amount is going to be recurring and it's equivalent to that future amount. All right. So let's look at this section in red. So the section in red, we have 5K all the way through here. Then we have 8K. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to run with this 5K and cut it. All right. I'm going to cut it. So there's one 
re recurring amount there. A4 is what? 5K, right, every year. Now that leaves me with 3K that I have to deal with here, right? 3K, 3K, 3K for the orange portion. Right? So I wanna find the equivalent of that. What I'm going to do is I know it's running for a long way at 3K, right? Oh, 3K and so on. So what I can do is I can say P equals A over I, where A is 10%, right? Where would that put me, right? This is in your five, right? So that's going to put me here in your four. So then I just need to move it to zero by moving it four places over. So now I've taken that and moved it over to present worth time period zero. This one started, right, red, section four, it already started from year zero onward. So now I can add those two together. Where did this one start? Well, since we converted it, right, then it goes from zero to 13. Now that that plane passed by, let's look at these amounts numerically. So while the plane passed by, it took the moment to do this. So the capitalized cost for C1 is easy, right? Because it is just a present worth already. Uh, the second one was $50,000 that only occurs one time, 10 years from now. So there's the 10, right? And C3 is obviously our interest rate. So that one was pretty straightforward as well. So the first recurring cost that we had was the one that occurs every 13 years, which we previously calculated to be $612, right? And that over. So you can see it, there it is. Now note that this runs from year zero onward, right? And this runs from year zero onward. So what I can do for three and four is just add them up and divide by the interest rate. Right? Well, why can I do that? Because of this, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just adding those two up and then dividing by the interest rate to get that one. And then last, you're left with that last section. Right? So what do we do there? Right? You can see that I worked out this formula. There's the 30K, which is to say 3,000 divided by our interest rate, which is 10%. And then I moved it over to year zero so that it can also be added up to these others, right? Since it's a present amount, I don't need to convert it. So there it is. Then you just add all these up and that's the capitalized cost of this problem. Now, perhaps some of that uh, slipped by you. So let's look at this example. If we were to look at this one and draw out a cash flow of, and now instead I'm just showing you the cash flow rather than telling you what happened. So let's look and figure out what happened. So we put a million dollars down right now, right? So we put a million dollars down right now, and then we have 5K of annual operating costs. So 5K, 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 all the way up through year five. Then in year eight, we have 8K and it looks like 8K runs indefinitely. So 8K just keeps on going. Then we have some kind of maintenance cost or other cost that occurs in year 10 and occurs again in year 20. So presumably it occurs again in year 30. So we have one non-recurring cost, this one. And then we have different one, two, three recurring costs. So as before, I'm going to break it up and the first one's going to be pretty easy, right? So if we were going to find the capitalized cost at I equal, and that should be total, right? The total capitalized cost at I equal to, let's just do 10% again, then what? 
then the first portion of it, so C1, is just going to be minus 1 million bucks. Right? That's the non-recurring portion. Then let's do the 5K. So as before, right, we can just cut this. We're going to take 5K all the way through. So that makes our life pretty easy because for CC2, it's just going to be 5K, right? Remember A pi, right? So P equals A over I when P is capitalized cost, which is to say, and it's really large. So it would be 5K divided by 10%, which is convenient because then we know it's 50K. So now that one's done, right. but now we're left with that other maintenance cost that increases over here. So now we have, no longer do we have 8K, right? Because we cut 5K out of it. So now we have 3K going on and on and on and on. Right. So if I'm going to solve for that portion of it, then what? Then I can do the same thing that we had done before by saying, you know, this is a multi-step one. So I have 3K, this is what type of value? It's A, right? So if I want, and it's A indefinitely, so P would then be A over I, which mathematicians are telling me is 30K, because these are negative. Then where does that place that? Well, that's gonna place it right here in period five. So to use that, I've got to bring it back to zero, right? So then my capitalized cost for that third section is going to be minus 30k, p given f, 10%, five years. Right? Now I've moved it to zero, so I can add it to these others, which is why I'm now calling it a cc somebody. Three in this case. Done? No, I'm not done. Because we still have this portion to go. Right, so now we have these 20 Ks. Now what I'm going to do as before is I wonder what the equivalent annual is to this. Right? I know the time frame here is n equals 10. Right? So I can't just do, oh, okay, well it's P times I, right, A pi, no. Because it's just N equals 10 for this section. And then this section repeats itself and repeats itself, but it's going to be the same amount every time, all right? So then all I have to do is say A, all right, for section four. And I already forgot how much it was. It was 20K. Is 20k, and I'm looking for A given some future amount at 10%, and this recurs in year 10. Right. Then all I have to do for my capitalized cost, because now this doesn't just go, this A doesn't just go for 10, right? Since it's recurring, then it's also going to go from 10 to 20, and 20 to 30, and whatever, whatever. So now I can use P equals A over I, right? So if that's the case, then CC4 is just going to be A4 divided by I, right? which will do the same thing as 200K in this case. AF, 10%, 10. And now I just add those up, and that's my capitalized cost.